it's been a while since i've done a video in this format but since you guys completely blew up the every fight in the monster association video i thought it was only right i did another one of these and i have a plan for doing one for you know saitama and king or even other characters in the series so just in case you guys wanted to come back and watch all the fights that include your favorite characters and it's common knowledge that a fan favorite character is none other than the hero hunter Garo. Now this video did take me a pretty long time to make so I would really appreciate it if you dropped a like and subscribe to the channel to push this video out to others but let's finally begin every single Garo fight in the series explained. Whilst Sitch is talking to the villains about the Great Seer's prophecies, it is shown that A-Class rank 5, 6 and 7 Heavy Tank Loincloth, Blue Fire and Magic Man are stationed near Sitch to stop any villains from attacking during his speech. However, our boy Garo makes his presence known and proceeds to talk about how the Great Seer's prophecy was spot on. Garo then introduces himself and says, I admire baddies so I've trained hard and destroyed many dojos and I see a lot of prey here for drawing out my strength. Garo looks menacingly as he quickly grabs Magic Man by his throat which causes heavy tank loincloth to charge up a punch that Garo easily dodges and slips past, so quick that he could not even see. Heavy tank loincloth looks at his arm to see that it had been mangled in a blink of an eye, as he looks back to see Garo ready to launch an attack which connects perfectly on the hero's chin, which knocks him out in the process. Garo then begins to lecture the villains and heroes whilst informing the villains that they will also die. Blue Fire then begins to charge up an attack and as he unleashes his flames right before it manages to connect with Garo, he swipes the hero's arm clean off, putting Blue Fire out of commission. Sitch then calls to the medical assistants as Garo begins to completely destroy the rest of the villains gathered around him, ending this extremely one-sided massacre. After completely off-screening Tank Top Vegetarian, Garo stumbles across Moomin Rider. Garo then realizes he has company as some other Tank Top brothers come out of hiding and intended to get payback for their brother. However, Garo with an instant takes one of them out with a punch, but Garo is sent flying by a punch from someone who is none other than the S-Class Rank 16 Tank Top Master. Tank Top Master then proceeds to smash the ground and break it to pieces to get Garo off balance, and in combination he uses a Tank Top Tackle which knocks Garo into the air but Garo recovers and lands on his feet despite taking some damage. Tanktop Master then questions if he held back and wonders if Garo is truly even human. Tanktop Master then uses a Tanktop Punch which deals critical damage to Garo, but Tanktop Master is met with a sinister smile and an even more sinister aura from Garo which convinces the S-Class hero to get rid of him right there and then. Garo then coughs up blood due to the damage he had sustained, which gives Tank Top Master the time to go in for a punch, but Moomin Rider gets in the way to protect Garo and tells Garo to go if he had learned his lesson and not to hunt ever again. Garo then begins to walk away and apologize, but menacingly turns around and retracts his statement and says he will murder them all, and as soon as Garo turns around he is met by Tank Top Master's fist, but is able to simultaneously use the water stream rock smashing fist to counter attack and completely overwhelm the S class hero with multiple fast attacks to his body and smashes him into a wall. And after this, Garo tells Tank Top Master to watch him as he murders his entire crew. However, Moomin Rider goes in with a justice crash, which unsurprisingly did absolutely nothing to Garo. Garo then proceeds to grab Moomin Rider and slam his head into the ground continuously and shows the Tank Top crew and says, it's your turn. Tank Top Master goes in for a last ditch attempt to stop Garo, but thanks to Garo's insane adaptability, he easily knocks him out even without looking and proceeds to dominate the Tank Top crew who stood no chance against this absolute monster. And as Garo is about to leave, Chiranko with probably the most pathetic attempt to stop Garo, jumps in who inevitably meets defeat. Bang and Bomb then appear at the scene but are too late as Garo had already left. Left. 
After the previous fight, Garo goes into a bar and asks for Golden Ball. Golden Ball tells Garo to let him finish his drink and Garo immediately smashes Golden Ball's glass which convinces Golden Ball to accept Garo's challenge as they step into an alleyway. Golden Ball tries to catch Garo off guard and send a shot towards him but Garo just manages to dodge but takes minor damage to the side of his face. Golden Ball then sends two other attacks towards Garo which Garo dodges fairly easily but one of them grazes the side of Garo's leg. Golden Ball then proceeds to use his killer move and send multiple shots in different directions and bounce and ricochet around the alleyway which forces Garo to get serious and focus on dodging them all with his crazy reflexes and speed which he does with ease but Golden Ball then sends more shots towards Garo's chest which Garo redirects continuously with ease. However, Spring Mustachio shows up to give Golden Ball some backup and goes in with multiple swings at Garo, which forces Garo to go onto the back foot. Spring Mustachio then charges at Garo with speed and in a series of slashes he fills the entire path which forces Garo to dodge upwards which gives Spring Mustachio the perfect angle to use his tomboy attack but as he is about to do this Garo catches his sword with his hands and smacks the A-class hero in the face with a strong right hook sending him flying and knocking him out in the process and exits the fight in the most stylish way possible. After beating the fat guy from the Hero Association, Garo still wants to hunt and Saitama appears behind him and Garo deduces that a hero is trying to hunt him so he turns around and chops Saitama by the shoulder but his attack did nothing but irritate Saitama who does the same back to Garo which knocks out Garo in the process and it seems Saitama was not looking for Garo but instead he was looking for a wig. Whilst Elder Centipede completely destroys the city, Garo is in the street looking for the next hero to hunt and as he's pondering something or rather someone falls from the sky and it is none other than Metal Bat who was originally fighting Elder Centipede and who looks pretty dead which Garo sees as a waste as he would have liked to hunt him but as the hero hunter is moving on, Metal Bat walks past him getting ready to go back and fight the dragon level monster and in short Garo calls him out and declares that he will hunt him. Garo then proceeds to go in and attack Metal Bat but the hero blocks and accepts Garo's challenge despite already being in pretty bad condition from his previous fight against Elder Centipede. Garo begins the fight by connecting a solid blow to Metal Bat's face but Metal Bat goes in and swings at Garo which Garo easily counters with his own attack and hits Metal Bat to the floor but before he could hit the ground Metal Bat uses his bat to break his fall and spring up and swings at Garo who dodges. Garo then observes Metal Bat and thinks he is at his limit but before he could even finish his sentence Metal Bat, Metal Bat's bat is already in the face of Garo which Garo barely managed to avoid. Metal Bat then roars in anger and goes forward with multiple swings to try and overwhelm Garo and this is when Garo realizes that his swings are getting faster despite being in bad condition. Garo then tries a barrage of hits but is blocked by Metal Bat's body and bat which forces Garo to pile on more attacks that Metal Bat straight up ignores and still advances towards Garo and unleashes a huge smash that Garo evades and as Garo avoids this he deduces that Metal Bat essentially gets stronger and more persistent as he accumulates more damage. Garo with a smile on his face plants his feet into the ground with force as a manhole cover springs up and Garo uses this as a projectile and throws it at Metal Bat with speed which Metal Bat responds by sending it back with his own bat. But Garo vanishes and ends up behind Metal Bat and bombards him with attacks but Metal Bat responds with swings once again but Garo dodges and tells Metal Bat to keep it up until he dies. But Metal Bat likes, but Metal Bat, like the absolute unit he is, responds and swings a huge attack downwards towards Garo, which Garo once again dodges. But Metal Bat begins to swing in circles to create an appearance of a tornado, which forces Garo into a corner. But Garo uses the water stream rock smashing fist to redirect all of Metal Bat's attacks and sends an attack at Metal Bat, which once again sends him back. And the fight seemingly had come to a close, but Metal Bat's sister calls his name, and before Metal Bat could, 
connect his final sneak attack on Garo. As his back is turned, he stops, and the force of the swing causes the floor beneath them to crack. And Metal Bat's sister, Zenko, shows up and asks what is going on. And as Garo goes towards Metal Bat, Zenko stands in the middle of them both and tells Garo that Metal Bat promised her to not expose her to any sort of violence, which Garo rather reluctantly accepts and goes away and says he wanted to hunt Watchdog Man anyway, but luckily for him, Zenko is pretty much the only reason he is still alive right now in the series. In City Q, we see none other than Watchdog Man, who is being praised by the residents of the city for his heroic acts, as he stands atop of a pile of dead monsters. Garo, who's in the crowd, observes Watchdog Man and smiles as he gets ready to fight the S-Class hero. Garo then in a blink of an eye springs towards Watchdog Man while he isn't looking, but this fight is off screen and skips to the end of the fight, where Garo is walking away injured from his fight and flashes back to how the fight went down, showing Garo struggling against Watchdog Man despite using the water stream rock smashing fist, and shows just how versatile and unique the way Watchdog Man fights. And it is revealed that Garo was unable to win due to the fact that Watchdog Man was just faster and more agile. And on top of this, the Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist is primarily used against human fighters and not the animalistic way of fighting that Watchdog Man utilizes. After leaving the area, Garo comes across King and gets excited by the idea of facing him and defeating him. So he charges at him with great speed, but before he could even do anything, Saitama nonchalantly kicks Garo away sending him flying through a concrete wall, concluding this interesting fight. This fight starts off with Garo and Tario in a hideout, and whilst Garo is recovering from his injuries from his prior fight, and after speaking to Tario for a while, Garo senses that they are being surrounded, and checks to see who it is, and identifies each of the heroes who are Glasses, Chain and Toad, Stinger, Smile Man, Death Gatling, Gun Gun, Shooter and Wildhorn. After realizing what is about to happen, Garo jumps out of the hideout to confront these heroes. Death Gatling proceeds to tell Garo that they are here to defeat him and take him back to the Hero Association, whilst also expressing his distaste for the S-Class heroes and their special treatment. The fight is kicked off by Gun Gun as he shoots a bullet at Garo, however Garo is able to narrowly dodge. Stinger then follows up with an attack that Garo is also forced to dodge. Shooter then shoots a barrage of arrows from above, which Garo dodges as well. Chain and Toad follows up with his own attacks, while Smile Man simultaneously attacks Garo from above, and as Garo dodges, Wildhorn attempts to come in and attack Garo from in front. As Garo tries to attack Wildhorn, Gun Gun manages to hit Garo, and Stinger then follows up and manages to cut Garo. Garo analyzes the battlefield but is not given the chance as Chain Toad and Smile Man both attack Garo yet again and as Garo dodges all of these attacks they continue to barrage Garo with attacks and Shooter then comes in with another arrow rain and Garo realizes that the attacks are dipped in poison making these arrows even more of a concern. Smile Man, Chain and Toad and Gun Gun attack all at once and whilst Shooter uses another arrow rain and this time two arrows manage to hit Garo on his back. Garo then realizes that Glasses is supplying Shooter with the arrows and attempts to go for him. Garo tries to grab Glasses but he manages to evade and land a blow on Garo's face. Death Gatling then proceeds to advise Garo to surrender and says that he has no chance of beating them all at once. However, Garo does not listen and uses a sort of breathing technique that seems to have allowed him to increase in his physical abilities. Because as Chain and Toad attacks Garo with his chains, Garo manages to grab it. Smile Man then uses an attack with his giant ball and hammer. However, Garo manages to redirect it to Chain and Toad, which completely takes him out of the fight. Gun Gun tries to shoot Garo, but Garo uses Smile Man's ball to block the bullets and smash the ball at Gun Gun, which manages to hit him and take him out in a similar way to Chain and Toad. Wildhorn then uses an attack to destroy Smile Man's ball that Garo used to take out the other two. However, Garo manages to get through the rubble created by the attack from Wildhorn, surprising him in the process. And Garo takes advantage of this and wraps Chain and Toad's chains around his legs, stopping him from moving. 
and Garu then cleverly uses Wildhorn's steel armor to protect him from Shooter's arrow rain attack. Glasses then throws pebbles at Garo to try and catch him off guard, but Garo catches each of them and throws them at Shooter with great speed, which knocks him out in the process. At this point, Garo had taken out three heroes, but had also taken considerable damage. Stinger then goes in to attack Garo, but Wildhorn is used as a barrier. Garo then charges at Stinger, challenging him to a one on one fight, knowing Stinger would be dumb enough to actually accept this. Garo whilst running shoots his hands into the ground and raises the roots of the tree as a distraction and uses this opportunity to smash Smileman in the face taking him out of the fight completely. Death Gatling then makes his first move of the fight and attacks Garo with bullets but Garo dodges each of them whilst running at glasses as his next target. Garo then unloads a bunch of punches at Glasses which he manages to barely block with his arms. Then Glasses in a last ditch attempt tries to attack Garo but Garo blocks and hits him in the face. But Stinger then intervenes and tries to hit him with a gigantic drill attack. But Garo manages to evade this attack with great skill and dodges Stinger with multiple hits to the face and body which knocks him out. Glasses then manages to muster up enough strength to try and deal a final blow to Garo but Garo just whacks him in the stomach and sends him flying into a tree. Death Gatling is the final hero left and uses his final attack Death Shower despite knowing a child is still in the hideout directly behind Garo. The bullets unload at crazy speeds but Garo expertly redirects and intercepts these bullets leaving only a portion of the hideout behind him whilst everywhere else around him has decimated by the bullets. Garo then taunts Death Gatling and says that he should have brought an S class hero and maybe they would have killed him. But Death Gatling refuses and proclaims that he is evidence that A class heroes matter. But this is all for nothing as Garo just charges at him and knocks him out with a kick. As Garo thought the fight was over, a new challenger appears. This fight is revealed to only be possible thanks to Glass's distress call. The fight begins with Genos announcing that he will eliminate Garo and they exchange fists and at first it looks evenly matched. However, Genos rushes in and uses machine gun blows which Garo just manages to redirect with his water stream rock smashing fist. But even with this, Genos still gets a hit in on Garo and clearly inflicts damage onto him. Genos then goes in for a punch that is propelled by his rockets but Garo with good reaction speed blocks by lifting his entire a leg which surprises Genos. Garo then counterattacks by throwing a kick at Genos's head which manages to cleanly land. Genos despite being struck down fires a huge energy blast towards Garo but Garo by the skin of his teeth dodges. Genos then springs up and says that Garo is a much more formidable opponent than he anticipated. But on the other hand Garo is observing Genos and realizes that he cannot win this fight because Genos is just too strong. Not to mention the injuries he has sustained from his previous battle. But Garo by utilizing his expert adaptability manages to imagine the movements of the S class hero Watchdog Man and proceeds to mimic his movements. As Genos realizes this, Garo with his crazy speed gets behind him, grabs his arm and pulls it off completely. However, little did Garo know that Genos still had control of the arm, despite it being pulled off. Genos' arm grabs Garo by the neck and shoots a blast to propel it towards a tree and pins Garo in place. Genos without wasting any time proceeds to blast the beam at Garo who is currently incapacitated. Garo then taunts Genos whilst using the strength of his legs to break the tree behind him to avoid being hit by Genos' beams. As Garo recovers from this, he rubs all the blood on him into his hair and eye which changes his appearance as one of his eyes and entire hair are now red. After this, a bunch of monsters emerge from the ground and attack Genos in an attempt to protect Garo but Garo is not able to escape as a pair of heroes join the fight. 
Bang comes in flying with a kick to Garo's face that sends him back. Garo attempts to stand up but is trembling due to the damage he has taken from his previous fights but manages to muster enough strength to face Bang and charge at him. But Bang easily counters by blasting multiple hits onto Garo leaving dents of his fist on him as they connect onto his body. Bang continues to beat the crap out of Garo but Garo manages to use the water string rock smashing fist to evenly collide with Bang for a brief moment. However, it is clear that Bang's attacks and techniques are much better than an injured Garo and Bang grabs Garo by his hands and slams him down to the ground breaking it in the process. Garo attempts to reach for a knocked out death gatling to use as a hostage but Bomb intercepts and kicks Garo in the jaw. Garo continues to be over overwhelmed as Bomb now joins the fight and beats Garo down along with Bang. Bang and Bomb both go in for a decisive blow but Garo with his last remaining strength roars and quickly ducks to evade their attacks. Phoenix Man then appears to quickly snatch and rescue Garo from being taken out. This peculiar fight begins with Saitama calling Garo out for not paying after dining and dashing from the restaurant they so happen to both be eating at. Garo realizes Saitama is actually a hero and begins to approach him. As Garo gets closer, he tells Saitama that he is going to kill him, but he is cut off as Saitama awkwardly and nonchalantly punches him away in a comedic manner. As Saitama has also realized that he has eaten without paying by accident. Following the brief and interesting encounter with Saitama, Garo, after recovering from Saitama's punch, wonders what just happened to him and begins to talk to Tario. However, as a voice calls out from the darkness, asking what Garo is doing, it is revealed that Royal Ripper and Bug God had been observing Garo after being ordered by Gyoro Gyoro to watch over him and they had concluded that Garo did not act like a monster and that he was not like they were. Garo then assumes a fighting stance and tells Tario to stand back. Royal Ripper begins to threaten to kill Tario which causes Garo to shout at Tario to run. However, Royal Ripper makes the first move and lunges at Tario but Garo manages to use his technique to stop the blade and kick Royal Ripper in the stomach sending him upwards. Royal Ripper manages to recover and seems to not have taken too much damage. Garo then realizes that these two may be a little more troublesome than he anticipated and gets into a stance that suggests he's starting to get serious. Garo then goes in for a hit on Bug God but Bug God tanks the blow and goes in for a flurry of attacks on Garo but Garo counter attacks and hits Bug God back due to his tough body he tanks it once again and smashes from above to hit Garo. Garo manages to block this attack but he gets sent flying back and collides with some wires and gets shocked in the process. However, Garo recovers and all three of them jump at each other and collide. Garo then in his head realizes that he can beat these guys but in the following panel we see that Tario had been captured by sludge jellyfish that happened to be following Garo as well. Garo in a fit of rage screams at him to let Tario go since he has nothing to do with this but Royal Ripper uses this as an underhanded and scummy opportunity to slice Garo in the back. Bug God then follows up with a blow to Garo's stomach and Royal Ripper then continues to brutally stab and slice Garo whilst he was on the ground and from there it seemed like the fight had been concluded as Bug God and Royal Ripper leave. However, little did they know that leaving Garo to bleed out and die would be a fatal mistake for both of them. After capturing Tario whilst Garo was down, Royal Ripper takes him back to the Monster Association to be tortured and killed. And as Tario is crying, he suddenly yells out for help and after recovering from a near-death experience and sneaking into the hideout, Garo smashes the wall down and the fight between Royal Ripper and a new and improved Garo had begun. Royal Ripper goes in to slice Garo but he catches his sword and breaks it in half and quicker than Royal Ripper could even react, Garo completely destroys Royal Ripper's face with a fist he shaped to look like a claw. And this attack was so powerful it sends Royal Ripper's head flying and cutting up his entire body into pieces simultaneously. Garo had finally won. 
After a brief encounter with some lower level monsters in the Monster Association, Garo had awakened the dragon level monster Overgrown Rover. Garo senses the overwhelming power of the monster and realizes just how outclassed he is and attempts to slowly walk away as Rover had not completely sensed of their presence just yet. However, to Garo's surprise, Rover suddenly charges up an energy beam from his mouth and fires it directly at him and Tario. Garo manages to run and use the destroyed ceilings and walls to cut through and survive. Garo then shouts at Tario to get away as he is only going to slow him down even more. Garo then proceeds to attack Rover's legs to direct his attention to him. Rover then charges a huge beam at point blank range downwards towards Garo and fires it quicker than Garo could even dodge. The impact of the attack causes the floors to break through and send Garo further down the monster's Association. However, surprisingly, Garu manages to barely survive this attack. Rover then follows up by blasting a barrage of beams towards Garo, in which he responds by going at Rover head on. This causes a huge amount of collateral damage and destroys the surroundings as well. Garu once again manages to survive this onslaught of attacks and jumps in the air to unleash his first strike onto Rover whilst telling it to sit down. Garo's attack was let off with great speed and power, but Rover brushes this off easily, establishing Rover as an insanely durable monster. Rover then unleashes yet another beam that sends Garo further down the Monster Association, which concludes the battle. After having a conversation with Yorogoro about limiters and monstification, Orochi from underneath the pillar Garo was standing on grabs him which signals the beginning of this insane fight. Orochi emerges from underneath and reveals himself whilst holding Garo in his hands and dropping him. Garo quickly recovers from the fall, however Orochi does not give Garo time to recover and immediately sends one of his tentacles towards Garo that pierces right through his chest but thanks to Garo's growing even further from his fight against Rover and his insane durability he survives this and manages to block and redirect the rest of the tentacles that Orochi had sent his way. Garo then jumps to a platform higher up in the chamber and runs across it whilst outrunning Orochi's tentacles that he had sent Garo's way. Garo then decides to go on the offensive and jump off the platform towards Orochi's head in an attempt to attack him but much to Garo's surprise, Orochi opens up his head, revealing his many mouths layered with fangs. Garo manages to evade this and jump to the floor, revealing just how huge and devastating this new form of Orochi is in comparison to himself. Orochi then unleashes huge amounts of fire from each of his dragon heads in which Garo manages to resist. Orochi then follows up with a punch towards Garo which is stopped in its tracks as Garo had blocked it but is not strong enough to completely withstand it and gets sent flying into the wall. As Garo stands up from this attack he smiles and says don't make me laugh and continues to comment on how Orochi is not scary enough and does not instill enough fear. Garo then takes a stance that suggests that he is getting serious with the water stream rock smashing fist but much to Garo's surprise Orochi copies this stance and says he will make Garo feel fear. Garo then quickly jumps up and charges towards Orochi claiming that Orochi will regret this and Garo is just completely gets sent flying into the wall from Orochi's attack knocking him out in the process. Garo had lost this fight. Puri bursts through a wall once again utilizing his newfound ability and comes across someone knocked out and chained up in a confined room. Puri proceeds to make the worst mistake of his life and wakes this figure up who appears to be the one and only Garo. Garo then proceeds to completely destroy Puri in a succession of strong blows to Puri's body which causes Puri to drop in pain stopping him from even being able to stand up despite having his bristly armor active which just goes to show how immensely strong Garo has gotten after his fight against Orochi as he lets out a huge roar in a menacing manner. 
Puri is then sent flying through the walls once again and is defeated on the floor which concludes this brief fight. However, a huge foot is stamped on the floor behind Puri and that will be left for the next fight which is probably one of the best fights in the series. After seeing Puri beaten on the floor, Darkshine asks who defeated him and that is when Garo, who at this point has not woken up from his slumber and is moving unconsciously, appears from the broken wall and stares down at Darkshine. Darkshine smiles back and says this will be fun as he approaches Garo to start this crazy fight. Garo kicks off the fight and charges at Darkshine, however with his insane durable body, Darkshine knocks Garo back and sends him flying. Garo then quickly recovers and with his insane speed he spirals around Darkshine and goes in with speedy kicks in which Darkshine counters by smashing him with his fist which causes Garo to wake up. Garo wonders where he is and how he ended up here fighting Darkshine, but Garo being Garo does not let this phase him and reads the situation and gets ready to continue fighting. Darkshine then goes in to punch Garo, however Garo weaves underneath his huge fist and knocks Darkshine in his side and follows up with a downwards kick with his heel that smashes Darkshine into the floor. However Darkshine with no scratches springs back up and continues to talk about how he will defeat Garo. Garo then responds by saying he will take care of both heroes and monsters and that they are all done for but Darkshine charges at Garo with killing intent to crush him and as Garo tries to use the water stream technique it does not work and as Darkshine connects all the bones in Garo's ribs crack due to the impact and sends him flying through multiple pieces of rubble and just as Darkshine had thought he had won Garo sends rocks flying at his face which does not affect Darkshine but surprises him as he did did not expect Garo to survive his attack. Garo then comments on the hypocrisy of the heroes and begins to unleash a flurry of attacks at Darkshine which forces Darkshine to go on the defensive and wait for an opening for when he slows down. However, Darkshine after a while starts to realize that Garo is not letting up and instead is increasing his speed causing him to for the first time in his entire life to consider the possibility of defeat. After this, Darkshine begins to panic and throws a super alloy bazooka at Garo, which Garo responds by throwing a punch back and as they clash Darkshine realizes that Garo had not only withstood his attack but had gotten considerably stronger in a short period of time and of course little did Darkshine know that Garo had begun to remove his limiter which explains this rapid growth in strength. Garo then continues to attack Darkshine with speed and as Darkshine tries to go in for a punch, Garo easily dodges and hits Darkshine in his abdomen and sends him flying backwards on the floor. Garo then mocks Darkshine about how he claimed he would stop him and menacingly looks at Darkshine as his new form is revealed. Darkshine then goes in to try and attack Garo once again but he is quickly and easily countered by Garo's newfound speed and power. The narrator then begins to reveal the true nature of Darkshine and say how Darkshine never wanted to throw himself into struggle but only wanted the thrill of victory and when faced with a truly tough opponent Darkshine simply crumbles and cannot overcome it and in this case the hurdle he cannot overcome is the hero hunter himself Garo as a beautiful double spread of Garo's power personified towering over Darkshine is revealed. In a fit of panic Darkshine uses another super alloy bazooka which connects with Garo but Garo despite taking damage pulls through and seems to heal thanks to his new form and charges straight back at Darkshine kicking him in the abdomen and sending him flying to the floor and says he will take Darkshine's arms as he pins him down brutally. Darkshine then lets out an eek in reaction to Garo's overwhelming power which causes Garo to remember the bullying he and Tario faced as he saw Darkshine's helplessness similarly to those situations and backs away and says it looks like I was bullying him and says that's not the kind of evil I want to carry out and at this point it is clear that Garo is not a villain necessarily and is instead uh, an anti-hero who I guess you could say is taking his own approach and carrying out justice as he sees heroes as morally questionable and hypocritical in their acts. 
Suddenly, Garo's shoulder begins to swell and cause him to drop in pain as the surrounding area begins to fall apart due to the fight between Tatsumaki and Saiko Sorochi. Darkshine is then put into a green bubble created by Tatsumaki as he is floated out of the collapsing monster association, lamenting on how pitiful he was and realizing that he had just lost this fight. After defeating Bomb, Garo stares down at Bang and gets ready to fight, as well as Bang. This pre-awakened form of Garo roars at Bang as they both charge at each other. Garo goes in for a punch but Bang redirects this and they proceed to exchange blows for a while but Bang finds an opening and kicks Garo backwards into the air. After he does this, Bang quickly goes to where Garo will land and then kicks Garo backwards and follows up by hitting him into the air and then jumps up to slam him back down but Garo blocks and manages to wrap his legs around Bang in the air and slam him down to the ground. Bang recovers and they exchange a punch as they both hit each other in the face. Garo then gets into the heart exploding release stance which surprises Bang since it was a technique that he used to use and stopped using due to its side effects and consequences. We then get a flashback of Bang when he was younger and the leader of the Fist of Exploding Heart Liberation and as we get this flashback it is revealed that Bang and Bomb fought in the past after having conflicting ideas and after being defeated Bang opened a dojo and then met Garo. We then go back to the fight and we see them exchange punches once again and it is clear that Bang is reaching his limits and after fighting Garo some more Bang says he has failed as a teacher by neglecting his students due to him being too busy being a hero. Bang then reveals that after this he will quit being a hero and that him and Garo can once again become master and pupil and as Bang says this part of Garo's shell on his eye begins to crack and they then both perform their respective techniques and clash. Garo then tries to swing back a kick at Bang but Bang dodges and Bang tries to correct Garo's stance and stop him from using the exploding heart released fist but Garo tries to attack Bang but Bang uses a kick to slam Garo into some rubble. Garo then tries to finish this fight by using the whirlwind water stream roaring aura sky ripping fist but Bang barely manages to match this and they both go in to punch each other and they both connect their punches but Garo grazes Bang's chest defeating Bang in the process. As Bang lay on the floor defeated, at the worst possible time, Vomited Fury Ugly appears in front of Bang and towers over his injured body. And as Vomited Fury Ugly is about to kill Bang, part of Garo's shell over his eye shatters, revealing his human eye, and in the process, awakens him from his unconscious state. Vomited Fury Ugly then uses a full body melting punch on Bang, but before it could connect, Garo with the most speed and power we've seen him use so far in the series goes right through Vomited Fury Ugly's chest, killing him in the process. After arriving at the battlefield of Saitama and Monaco, Flashy Flash wastes no time and goes in to attack Garo, who had also just arrived to the fight after beating Vomited Fura Ugly. Garo then introduces himself and as he does this, Platinum Sperm does his famous flash step and says, allow me to pass through for a sec, and hits Garo and Flashy Flash so quick they couldn't even react. Platinum Sperm then proceeds to show disappointment in Garo and says that they should have disposed of him from the start. Garo of course does not back down and says come get some as all three of them get ready to fight. The three of these absolute monsters are fighting at such speed they are simply illustrated as different coloured speed lines as they bounce around the battlefield so quick no other heroes could see them and their fight could be mistaken for some constellations. Platinum S and Flashy Flash clash but Garo appears above them and slams down on them using a kick that breaks the ground beneath them. Flashy Flash then exchanges some blows of Garo but is sent back into Platinum S. As Platinum S wraps his antenna around Flashy Flash's neck but Flashy counters with a wind blade kick. Planet S then suggests that Garo and him should team up and get rid of Flashy Flash but Garo responds by whacking Platinum S in the face with a punch which infuriates Platinum S. 
Garu then begins to feel like he's starting to master his martial arts completely and performs a monster calamity god slayer fist on Flashy and Platinum S but they recover and Platinum S increases the pressure of Flashy whilst Flashy thinks about how he has met four people who have surpassed his speed which infuriates him as he performs a Flashy fist but Platinum S uses Platinum Rings to counter this and kicks Flashy Flash away. But Flash Flash tries his hardest to recover and uses a flowing shadow feet towards Garo but he is countered and is bombarded with attacks and Platinum S deals the finishing blow sending Flashy Flash downwards and into the ground which takes him out of the fight. And now it's just Garo and Platinum S. As Garo and Platinum S fight they go at even crazier speeds and Garo then goes in for an attack that Platinum S tries to counter but is not quick enough to counter it and allows Garo to punch him and drag him crashing crashing down to the ground and the impact of this attack causes a huge explosion but Platinum S is not done yet and roars and calls Garo's name out but Garo does an Uno reverse card and says let me pass through for a sec and goes straight through Platinum S and smashes him to pieces. After defeating Platinum S, Garo does not get a break and Sage Centipede emerges from the ground accompanied by his sister, Evil Ocean Water, who is now huge and has absorbed the ocean. Garo then wastes no time and unleashes a barrage of attacks on Sage Centipede which makes Sage Centipede acknowledge Garo's strength. We then see Tario in the escape helicopter and Garo sees this and says that brat he manages to escape which makes Sage Centipede use the helicopter as bait and threatens to shoot it down if Garo moves. Sage Centipede then uses this to his advantage and uses a Great Centipede March followed up by a Great Ocean Cannon by Evil Ocean Water and as these attacks connect to Garo we see a figure running along the water directly at Evil Ocean Water and it is none other than the Baldi himself, Saitama. Saitama then proceeds to use a serious series, serious punch and punches right through Evil Ocean Water defeating the monster in the process and taking it out of the fight as well. Sage Centipede sees this and tries to go for the helicopter but Metal Bat joins the fight and uses a dragon thrashing on Sage Centipede but this does not do much damage at all. Metal Bat then realizes Garo is on the battlefield and complains at Garo for trying to get in his way but Garo explains the situation and they both go in to use a savage tornado and a roaring aura sky ripping fist causing considerable damage to Sage Centipede but Sage Centipede still pursues the helicopter and grabs a hold of it and turns back at Metal Bat and Garo and uses a Centipede Grand March on both of them. The heroes on the helicopter try to help and the two heroes mount a gun and shoot bullets into the eyes of Sage Centipede which allows Garo to break free of Sage Centipede's grasp and follows up by slamming Sage Centipede in the face. Metal Bat then comes in with a spiral of overwhelming victory and slices off the tendrils that grab the hold of the helicopter which allows Garo to throw the helicopter to a nearby net and get it to safety. Sage Centipede then uses a 6666 legged Grand March but Metal Bat and Garo counter by using a Savage Hurricane and a Cross Fang Dragon Slayer Fist which once again causes considerable damage to Sage Centipede. Garo then attacks Sage Centipede once again and goes right through Sage Centipede and takes out its regenerative core and throws it up into the air and forces Sage Centipede to chase after it. Garo throws it so far into the air that it reaches out to space. Garo manages to get to the core first and destroys it by using Sage Centipede as a platform. Garo then flashes back to when he trained with Bang at the dojo and compares it to the situation he is currently and pretend Sage Centipede are like the tiles he crushed when he was at the dojo and slices right through Sage Centipede from the top and says he is the pinnacle of martial arts as he slices down the monster's huge body all the way down to earth where, where in a cool double spread he poses in front of the cut corpse of God's disciple Sage Centipede. After defeating Sage Centipede, Garo faces off against Saitama as Garo asks who Saitama is. Garo senses Saitama's power and decides to charge at him to end the fight quickly but Saitama just punches Garo away with no effort at all which jogs Garo's memory of who Saitama is. 
They then continue fighting and end up fighting so high in the sky that you could see the Earth's curvature in the background. Saitama then tries to strike Garo in his face but Garo with insane speed dodges and counters with an attack of his own and sends Saitama flying down with a kick and Garo bounces off the debris in the sky and zips towards Saitama on the surface and straight up karate chops the top of Saitama's head. However, the Baldi's head is far too durable which causes Garo's entire hand to shatter but he manages to regenerate his hand. Saitama then punches Garo backwards as Garo recognizing that Saitama is way too strong but still continues to transform into a much more monstrous form as he stumbles across Tario who thanks Garo for saving him before and calls him a hero which sidetracks Garo as he tries to explain to Tario that he is a monster. Saitama then comes in front of Garo and calls him chicken which angers Garo who instantly strikes Saitama to the head which once again does absolutely nothing to Saitama as he proceeds to slap Garo backwards, sending him flying <laughs> backwards again, but Garo recovers and charges towards Saitama and chops him in the side of the face, which Saitama catches his hand and wraps them around each other, but Garo tips Saitama over and smacks him down with a punch and uses a god slayer instant attack, which plants Saitama into the ground. But Saitama pops out from the ground opposite Garo and as Garo sees this he wastes no time and uses a god slayer ascending attack in combination with a great power attack sending Saitama flying into multiple large buildings but as the smoke and debris settle down we see that Saitama is standing straight with not even a scratch on him which angers Garo as he sends a barrage of attacks towards Saitama who isn't even taking the fight seriously as he dodges with ease. Garo then begins to transform again and grows wings as he manages to connect an attack on Saitama sending him flying into the side of a mountain. Garo then gets ready to slam Saitama which causes the mountain to erupt and reveal the magma within. However, Saitama is not harmed and punches Garo away. Saitama is tougher than a mountain. Saitama then begins to talk about how Garo reminds him of King which just angers Garo further as he sends multiple attacks towards Saitama which Saitama with little to no effort dodges. Garo then grabs Saitama and with the help of the sort of rockets on the side of you know his feet he boosts into the top of what looks like a volcano and uses an extreme far gin which causes geographical changes on the other side of the earth as some sort of temple is revealed. Saitama on the other hand is not affected by this and proceeds to use consecutive normal punches on Garo which is when Garo realizes that none of his attacks will work against Saitama and deduces that Sage Centipede must have been talking about Saitama and not himself as he is sent flying into a shallow body of water as he questions what exactly Saitama is and why he possesses such unfair strength and in a last ditch attempt Garo tries to punch Saitama but he is countered by a lackluster punch from Saitama which breaks the shell off of Garo revealing his true body and as he is defeated he laments and wonders if this is how everything ends for him. However, a voice calls out a huge cloud begins to form in the sky as two huge feet appear from the clouds and this is none other than God. As he talks to Garo about his deepest wishes and how to counter the fist that has turned against God, as a figure of Bang appears behind Garo and moments later we see God face to face with Garo and as Saitama looks into the sky he sees something jump down and this is not the same Garo from a few moments ago but instead this is Cosmic Fear Awakened Garo who now seems to have a galactical cosmic layer of what seems like skin and no face at all. Garo then proceeds to get ready to continue his fight with Saitama as he goes in to use a nuclear fission which is a new attack that he has acquired from this new form which literally causes a nuclear explosion to happen on impact in several areas around where he hit Saitama. Saitama is once again not really affected by this, well this time his clothes had began to tear up a little bit. Garo then goes into Saitama mode and uses consecutive normal punches which Saitama counters with his own which causes another huge explosion on impact that sends both of them flying but they both jump back and recover. Garo at this point is just showing off and uses a gamma ray burst which engulfs Saitama completely sending him flying and putting him out of the fight for the moment. Garo then appears in front of the heroes as he radiates his cosmic energy 
Balas then shows up to explain what the radiation does to humans and tells Garo to stop and just as Garo refuses, Genos jets towards Garo with just his torso but this does nothing to Garo as he lifts Genos from his head and just as Garo does this, Blast quickly reacts with a dimension cannon that Garo easily dodges but Blast creates a portal above Garo and transports him to Blast as he connects a gravity knuckle to Garo's face. Blast then proceeds to do this multiple times with great speed and tries to shut Garo into another dimension but thanks to Garo's ability to literally copy techniques from just looking at them, he's able to create his own portal and appears in front of Blast and uses a gravity knuckle and the nuclear fission at the same time which forces Blast to use portals to transport the impact of the attacks high into the sky to protect the heroes in the surrounding area as they both separate. Garo then picks up Genos and drives his fist straight through Genos' chest. Just as Garo does this, Saitama finally arrives back to the battle scene and sees this happen right in front of his eyes as he realizes that he is too late. Saitama's face at this point is by far the most serious we've seen him look so far in the series and wastes no time and straight up goes in with a death punch which forces Garo in a split second probably less than that to use Saitama mode and copy this move and also uses a serious punch that Blast realizes is too much for the earth to handle so he transports the both of them to just outside of earth in space and their punch connects and causes serious strain on Blast. A few members from Blast's team helps him to pull off this portal as the impact of the serious punches sends both Saitama and Garo flying deeper into outer space and moments later Garo and Saitama land on what looks like some sort of planet and as Saitama stands up it is revealed in a beautiful color page that Saitama and Garo were in IO next to Jupiter. Garo is shaken by the fact that they had ended up here but wastes no time and uses a portal underneath Saitama but Saitama straight up just kicks the portal away which is still baffling to me until this day but it's Saitama at the end of the day and Saitama follows up by punching Garo which sends him flying off of IO but he uses a portal to recover and appear behind Saitama but without even looking Saitama moves the portal to make Garo miss and punches Garo backwards but Garo recovers and uses multiple portals to try and overwhelm Saitama and uses the roaring aura scarabing fist, exploding heart release fist, water string rock string fist, whirlwind iron cutting fist and gravity knuckle and nuclear fission back to back which causes a massive explosion in the process and Saitama then responds with a serious series, serious table flip which causes the entire of IO to turn into just pieces of debris and Saitama used these rocks to perform the serious omnidirectional punches which Garo tries to portal away from but Saitama was already in his portal and punches him out of it sending him flying around the remnants of IO and Garo had completely lost his sense of direction and links this to a bug being played with by a child in a box. Saitama then uses a serious punch and Garo responds by copying him. Garo then uses a portal to try and land an attack on Saitama but Saitama ducks backwards and avoids this and proceeds to send his fist through the portal and hit Garo with a solid punch and sending him flying back but Garo being as persistent as ever uses another portal to end up right behind Saitama as he is in the air and they both attack at the same time and hit each other on the head and stomach but Garo faces the brunt of the attack and goes back into the portal to try and catch Saitama off guard but Saitama had vanished since he had jumped into the air and comes back down with great speed and power and strikes Garo in the back of his head which causes considerable damage to Garo. Garo then tries to respond with a punch to Saitama in the stomach but this does nothing and Saitama whacks Garo in the face and this is when Garo starts to realize that he is not getting closer to Saitama in strength but instead Saitama is simply growing at such a rate that Garo could never catch up to him and realizes that if he continues to keep taking these attacks he would eventually die and in a fit of rage Garo goes up to punch Saitama but Saitama without looking catches his fist and he straight up charges up a sneeze and sneezes the surface of Jupiter clean off exposing its core which sends them both flying into space and whilst this is happening Garo is able to see earth with his crazy vision and quickly sends a nuclear fish into Saitama's face and portals to just outside of earth 
but little did he know that Saitama was right behind him and had caught up to him with a fart. Saitama then punches Goro right down to earth essentially ending the fight but as Goro lays there defeated he sees the lifeless body of Tario and instantly begins to run away whilst crying exposing the fact that Goro genuinely cared for him and realised that he had been clinging on to Tario for support and that Saitama had been doing the same thing when it came to Genos. Garu at this point has somewhat had a face turn and decides to fix everything he has done by teaching Saitama his ultimate technique which is time travel and of course Saitama is able to pull this off and time travels to when Garu first turned into Cosmic Garu and is able to one punch him since the time travel Saitama is leaps and bounds stronger than essentially the birth of Cosmic Fear Garo and we see that Cosmic Fear Garo's face begins to light up as all of his techniques and knowledge leave his body ending this absolutely insane battle. Okay so that concludes every single Garo fight in the series explained. This video took like two weeks or so, maybe three weeks to make, so I would appreciate if you liked, but apart from that, tell me your favorite Garo fight and why, but apart from that, I'm, I'm going to go take a nap.